watch review, we're going to be taking a look at the Sunto Core. This is the brushed steel version. So let's get right into it. As always, we're going to start off with price. You can reasonably expect to pay around $300 out the door. So that's after taxes and shipping and all that good stuff. I paid about $301 off of Amazon and looking at the other online retailers, they really didn't stray too far from that price as well. As far as the diameters go, across the case, I'm getting around 49, let's see, I got 47 and a half earlier. So I would say between 48 and 49 millimeters. And then for thickness, we are looking at 13 just over 13 millimeters, which I think is fantastic. That might be a little bulky for some of you, but for me personally, I prefer the 13 millimeter case thickness. For weight, we're looking at 117 grams or four ounces. Not bad at all. Here is the wrist shot. I think it is very reasonable and very ergonomic in its design. And it is something that I think is very pleasing to wear for long periods of time. I almost forgot to do a 360 view. I always like to do these in my videos just so you can see what it looks like in different angles of light. Get that more dynamic picture of the watch that you're trying to purchase. For functions and features, this is an ABC watch or altimeter, barometer, and compass. Looking at the main display, you've got your time as indicated right here in the center. And underneath that, you've got the items that are being displayed on the screen. So right now you've got time and that's squared, meaning that time is displayed. And then altimeter and barometer, compass, and then underneath that is kind of like supplemental data so right now we've got the date or calendar data displayed and if I hit this button um, second hand dual time sunrise sunset and then this is your stopwatch timer and then you can keep it blank if you prefer a cleaner looking display to get to the altimeter, barometer, and compass, you would hit this mode button right here. And as you can see, it is showing you that your barometer is displayed. And then your compass. Now I have my altimeter and barometer set to auto mode, so it will display whatever information is pertinent to me at the time. So considering right now the weather is quite bad and it's probably detecting some pressure changes, it is automatically shifting to barometer to let me know hey you know the what the weather is changing and I'm sure if I was trekking along a mountain it would automatically shift back to altimeter mode now to adjust pretty much anything on the watch you would hit this mode button right here hold that for two minutes or sorry two seconds and now you're in the menu setting mode if that's what you want to call it um, this is your up button and this is your down button so you can change your obviously your time and date your sunrise and sunset set the reference point for your altimeter and barometer so you know you could just go online and find out the location that you're in and what is the um, barometric pressure there so that way you can set the reference point and calibrate your compass and then shift your units from imperial to metric so there is a way and a very useful way for you to adjust the watch so it's giving you very useful and accurate data. And then to get out of it, this is your back button. So you just hit that and you go back to main time. And then for other little special things, the crystal is sapphire. So that's a wonderful thing. And then the main case is all stainless steel and I think it looks absolutely beautiful. Um, as far as the water resistance goes, we're only looking at 30 meters or 100 feet. So, you know, not ideal for an outdoor adventure watch, but I think it's good enough for what most people are going to use it for. And as long as you keep that into consideration that this probably isn't the ideal dive watch, then you'll be just fine. And on the screen, you can see the illumination. It's not super bright, but I think it does the job well. Um, 
no complaints here. I think it's quite pleasant. The numbers being illuminated like that, I am a fan of that type of backlight. I think the bracelet is done, or sorry, not really a bracelet, this is a strap or band, but I think it's done in a very tasteful manner. It's got this matte black type finish. Um, the material, it feels like maybe silicone. Doesn't feel like rubber, but it's very soft. If you are familiar with Seiko, their turtle bands, um, it feels very similar to that. Uh, I very much like how it feels. However, it will get a little bit sticky as the day goes on just because of sweat and grime and all that stuff. So, you know, you might have to uh, remove the watch from your bracelet just to let it air out every once in a while. But that's something that plagues any kind of watch band with, you know, made out of rubber or silicone. But other than that, um, it's very comfortable, very soft. It does really feel like there's a pillow wrapped around your wrist. So I do like that. And then the keepers have these little, I don't know if you can see that, see those little notches sticking up? Um, so basically it will, it's almost like a peg that goes inside each of the holes to lock it in place so the keeper will never accidentally fall off the bracelet or band, um, increasing the risk of you losing the watch. So I also think that's a good thing. Now I just want to go over my personal thoughts, starting off with what I think are good things. Um, number one is the display. I love dot matrix style displays. I think they look really professional, very cool, and I think it's unfortunate that there are not as many watches out there with dot matrix displays. Uh, secondly is just the overall case design and quality. I really think that this is the embodiment of that northern European sleekness, elegance, um, overall just professional look. I think it looks really cool and they did a great job here. And then um, thirdly is, I don't want to call these lugs, but they're almost like lug arms. Basically the things that the band attaches to. I really like what they did here. Um, it is flexible you know it works with your body how you move and throughout the day as your wrist expands I think um, just I don't know I, I really don't know how to explain it but it's unique it's different but it works and I think they did a great job there now my thoughts that are negative and again remember these are kind of my personal thoughts uh, so I think the cost to function ratio is kind of out of whack here. So basically you've got an ABC watch, which is wonderful, but it doesn't really have uh, longevity. You know, the battery life is rated for 12 months. And after looking at several other YouTube videos, they all agree that the battery dies at, you know, around that point, either at the 10, 10 month mark or the 14 month mark, but they all average around a year. And so to me, that is unsatisfactory. You know, obviously different strokes for different folks, but for me, I just think one year is way too short. Um, it's too short of a time period for me to have, have to swap out the battery. Another negative in my opinion is the water resistance that you see at 30 meters, 100 feet. Just for the purpose of this kind of watch at this price range, and you know, $300 is you know, probably the lowest price you're gonna find for this model. Uh, I don't know. I, I just think that's um, very substandard. When you compare it to other watches in its class um, and in its price range. So, you know, you've got this Pro Trek right here, which does everything that the Suunto Core does, but it's got 200 meters water resistance, you've got the ABC, and you've got the Tough Solar battery, so this will last me around a decade before I need to seriously swap anything out. Now these negative things that I'm saying that are negative to me, um, they're, you know, they're not going to make or break the overall functionality or performance of the watch, but you know, I've already got ABC watches and I already have digital watches with dot matrix displays. So at this price range, to me, it's just not worth it. I don't see much value going on here. Now that being said, as an aesthetic timepiece, I think it's super cool. I really like the way that it looks, 
but I can't justify the $300 price tag for the functions that I am getting. And to be perfectly honest with you, I can get the same amount of joy from these budget-friendly Pulsar watches that go for you know, easily a third of the cost. Obviously, they don't have the ABC functions, but if I'm talking about just, just an aesthetic timepiece, so I'm not using it for the functions, I'm just wearing it because I'm a collector of watches and I like digital watches, then you know, these, this style gives me just as much joy for a fraction of the cost than the Sunto Core. Just want to wrap up the video now. Um, I hope that you're not taking this as a negative review. I think it's just not for me. The Suunto Core at this price range, um, I, I can get a lot more value from a Pro Trek or any other solar powered ABC watch at either the same or less cost. Um, they do have a cheaper version, the resin or not resin, it's a plastic black version. And you know, I'm sure functionality and quality is just as good as this one. So I think that one will be a better investment. Um, just, you know, having a battery life of only one year, no solar functionality and uh, very low water resistance uh, is a deal breaker for me. So I probably will end up returning this watch. But, you know, for the collector, um, if you just like the aesthetic and the way that it looks, it is beautiful. And again, it's, it's going to function just fine as long as you're willing to accept that once a year, you're going to have to swap out the battery. And for me, that's just not something I, I want in my watch. So that's all I got to say for now. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that it helps you with your next watch purchase. Thank you for watching and tune in for my next episode. Bye.